Hey, welcome to Old Gold Wings Podcast number two. Hope everybody's having a good day today. All right, guess I'll start off with uh, some information on my latest carb set I received for repair. Since last November, I rebuilt, uh, repaired, oh, I don't know, over 24 carbs as of this date. And I have an old, uh, uh, can't even think this morning. Uh, I have an uh, ad on eBay advertising complete rebuild service, by the way. And uh, I'll leave a link in the description area. Really wish I would have videoed each one I repaired because uh, they had slight different and interesting problems on each, of course. And uh, some came in from customers who had just bought his gold wing and wanted it completely gone through. Majority of them came in partially disassembled because it got a little complicated looking. <laughs> yeah. Yes, it did, um, because it seems like they only pulled one car apart and then gave up and just put it in a little baggie and <laughs> sent it on its way, to me anyway. Um, those were the fun ones because uh, I had to guess a bit what all problems I was going to uh, find overall. I had a couple that came in leaking even after a quote-unquote total rebuild. And those turned out to be problems with the aftermarket cheap rebuild kits, which, yes, they are cheap, and uh, you'd be surprised at the price variations. It's amazing what those cheap kits um, have in them. I've I've seen on YouTube where people will buy those kits, and majority of those parts don't even fit <laughs> the carb, even though they are designed for that particular carb so you you know you get what you pay for uh, i've had to call them back and ask for the original high and low speed jets because the aftermarket ones were either not the correct jetting which called caused uh you know the just bad performance all the way around or they had small burrs from bad manufacturing and collected particles of debris uh didn't didn't take much to clog those up and cause a problem um, well, let's see here. Cheap ones, you know, are bright color, uh, gold color, compared to the dull brass color of the originals. And those jets are very robust original Honda parts, no matter how gunked up they are. And everyone I've gotten a hold of uh, from one, you know, I've had them where they were just completely plugged up with nasty old pieces parts or little rubber parts and whatever you know what have you that have collected over the years through the fuel lines and uh so when i get those back to the people there i always tell them you know get new fuel lines and then get a new fuel filter first thing replace those because it's they're real easy to get to you know if the carbs are out already uh so yeah i always suggest that and uh, braided lines uh smart move right there if you get braided line fuel line because uh, think about it, those those fuel lines there are right above the hot parts of the engine, and all you need to do is rupture a cheap rubber line, and uh, yeah, you're looking at uh, possible fire there. I've seen it done, <laughs> but uh, you know you, you get the same thing with the cheap O-rings. Uh, with today's gas, those cheap parts just seem to melt over time and turn to mush. Uh, yeah, the cutoff. Uh, diaphragms, the accelerator diaphragms, uh, just even the O-rings. I've, I've had them where I just have to peel them out with a little pick and they are literally mush or they're just hard as a rock. And it makes you wonder how they actually uh, held up at all. So the latest one I have on the bench right now has uh, two float valves that are stuck tight in the valve seats plus the fine screen underneath the valve seats were missing on both. So whoever worked on that previously didn't bother to put those back in. And you really need those. Those fine mesh filters that go under uh, each of the valve um, seats. But uh, let's see. Yeah, see, you know, they, they were missing on both. And as of this podcast uh, you're listening to, it's still on my bench being disassembled. Uh, the complaint is that he just got the bike and was told it had a complete rebuild last year but it has started leaking in the plenum area right underneath where the airbox is and the 
carb is overall very clean on the outside and I always insist on using Randac rebuild kits and uh, be done with it. I mean, yep, those, you know, those kits are expensive, but they are very complete and include very important correct fitting O-rings and miscellaneous little hardware. Uh, they're made of Viton material, which is very impervious to today's ethanol based gas uh, that's available. And, uh, yeah, you, you know, if you, uh, majority of those carbs that get in, they really are, at least some parts of those O-rings, like I said, are either literally just mush or they're just hard as a rock, uh, from being in there for so long. But, uh, in this case, the customer just wanted the leak found and fixed. Oh, well, um, I'll, I'll still work on them, but it's, it's nice if I just put those kits in there because it's included in the total price of uh, what I do with them when I get them. Um, so another carb assembly I got uh, early on came to me from the customer personally. He was from Illinois and travels a lot and brought it right to my door. Uh, I'm in Hickory Corners, Michigan, by the way. Uh, so yeah, he's definitely a couple hundred miles away from me. Uh, he had a very nasty looking carb assembly that had been once again overhauled last year, quote unquote, and it would not idle or accelerate smoothly. Along with that, he had a donor carb assembly that looked like brand new on the outside, but he insisted on the nasty one because that's the one that, uh, like I said, he had done. It looked like he had it done down in Indiana somewhere because he had it sitting in the box that, uh, was used to uh, mail it out to that person down in Indiana. But anyway, I uh, pulled those nasty carbs apart and found those nasty-looking gold-colored jets and aftermarket needle and seats installed. <clears throat> Plus, the floats were set just above the 15.5-millimeter level needed to run those smooth. you really got to get those close. That's a fine line there, 15.5-millimeter. Actually, if you look, you know, along the side there between the the uh, carb body and the flow, it's almost parallel, but not quite. Uh, so I pulled and cleaned the carb, uh, the clean carb part, and uh, stole the original jets and needle <laughs> and seeds from there. Did a complete rebuild and did a pressure check and bent sink, and uh, everything came out good and another happy customer. I mean, that was a couple months ago and haven't haven't heard back so he's good to go and i could go on and on what i found on the majority of these carbs and have been sent to me for various repairs but i need to move on right now and uh actually so i'm thinking right now just uh you know just say here here's some of the places i've ordered from when i did my major rebuild of my bike i went from front to back minus rebuilding the engine because uh, I got lucky with my bike. I've had it for about 11, 12 years now. And uh, I know the previous owners, and it was very well taken care of. It had 46,000 miles on it when I got it. And, jeez, I just put 11,000 miles on it. But last year, I just decided uh, in the wintertime, I'm going to pull it all apart, get all the correct tools, uh just scour the internet and just study 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 and uh it's not bad if you know you know if you know what you're doing and you have the right tools you've got it made but uh anyway uh over the last winter i had real quick uh real quick service and good luck with uh, parts being available and uh, a couple of those places are like i mentioned earlier would be the randex cycle shack they're out of florida Super nice people. <coughs> Excuse me. And uh, this is where I get all my carb parts and kits from. They're fast service. And uh, they're not cheap, but those are quality uh, repair parts that you get. I mean, they give you every little part you will need to completely rebuild that carburetor from start to finish. Never had a problem with those folks. I've never been shorted parts. Never had bad parts. Very good stuff. Uh, so then when I went to the brakes on my system, I completely rebuilt the calibers front and back plus the 
brake lines. I went with uh, braided brake lines. And uh, the place I got all my stuff from was Brake Crafters. Brake Crafters. Let's see if I can say that real fast. Now, they're out of Troy, Ohio. And that's where I go for all my brake part uh, needs. Quality parts and always in stock. And uh, fast shipping, too. Um, very fast. So, had extremely good luck with them. And uh, another place is Babbitt's Online. I use these people for my OEM parts, such as seals and bearings. Uh, they have a nice blow-up section so you can see actual Honda part numbers to make orders. And uh, they're located up in Muskegon, Michigan, just north of me. And again, fast service, a nice people, large store you can actually go and visit also. And uh, I've actually found numerous hard-to-find parts on uh, eBay. And if Babbitt's doesn't have it, I just take a part number from them through their blow-up charts of each segments of that bike. It hasn't I mean, the blow-up charts are really nice. It's uh, You get all your numbers you need and write them down. And if Babbitt's doesn't have it, uh, like I said, you can get right on eBay and uh, just do a search. And uh, you'd be surprised how many parts you can find on there. And the person selling it has no idea <laughs> what it's for. They probably had it laying around with other odds and ends and just want to get rid of it. And uh, I found OEM parts in the original bag and or box and like that. And cheap with fast shipping. Uh, just never know. But I've had good luck. I've got several people on eBay that I order from. When I was uh, going after all my parts, because that's what I did last. Well, it was like September. What September is when I started thinking about when winter hits, I was going to rebuild my bike. So I started building up parts ahead of time. You know, I go through all the forums and the uh, YouTube videos and and what have you there, and I take notes about how I was going to attack my bike, and I just I went from the front to the back. And uh, made it a lot easier. Um, okay, yeah. Let's see. All right. Uh, yeah, this looks like a good place to stop. Now, uh, keep checking in and uh, subscribe to this channel so you know when another episode of this podcast goes up. And thank you for listening. And uh, let's see if I can coax some other people to come on and give their ideas on how to fix a bike or find repair parts from reliable sources. Uh, that'd be nice. Get somebody else's opinion or what have you. And you can check my ad out on eBay for complete 80 through 83 Goldwing carb rebuilds. And I'll put a link up in the description area. So until next time, we'll either see you on the old Goldwings uh, page on Facebook. Or, you you know, when you listen to me on this podcast. So anyway, until next time, see you. Thank you.